Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition as always. I do hope you're well. Uh, today we're looking at, frankly, a masterpiece of a solo played by Larry Carlton on the Steely Dan tune, Kid Charlemagne. Um, as always with these solo analyses, you can find a tab in the description box below. It's available in both PDF format and Guitar Pro format, whichever you need. Uh, there's a lot to get through today, so let's crack straight on. Um, and you've seen in previous uh, videos I've done like this uh, just how much the underlying chord sequence um, governs the note choices that are in the solo. So I think it would be wise to take a look at that chord sequence to begin with. Here it is. I know it is a little bit complicated, but then again, this is a Steely Dan tune and not a status quo tune, so what did you expect? Anyway, uh, let's crack straight on with uh, the first section of the solo. I've um, broken it down into eight different uh, sections of varying length, and here's the first one. Okay. Um, this lick is played over um, a descending chord sequence from a D minor 7. Um, basically, we start on a D minor 7, then go to an F over a C bass, then to a B minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor, and from there on into, I think it's, uh, where do we go after that? Yes, an A minor 7 um, to F major 7 to a C over E. Um, what's going on here basically is that A minor is, is sort of the home chord in this little uh, block of the solo. Um, the D minor, it's actually a D minor 7th but we can think of it as a D minor. If we drop the bass note on that D minor down to a C, uh, we can do that like that we get an F chord with the C in the bass. Then if we take that C note and drop it down to a B, but still keeping the D minor there, we get the B minor 7 flat 5. So those first three chords, the D minor, the F over C, and B minor 7 flat 5, you can think of just basically as a D minor um, with a descending bass line. After that little section, it goes to an E7 chord and then lands on A minor. So really all that is, it's just D minor to E7 to A minor. And over that, you would be perfectly comfortable and perfectly legitimate to use an A minor pentatonic, which is exactly uh, what you can see in the tab is happening. He's using an A minor pentatonic. The one thing of note here is that um, he begins the solo with this D to E bend, like that, which kind of over the D minor 7 chord creates a minor ninth sound, and that's something that you're going to see cropping up in several points in the solo. Um, so here it is nice and slowly and just take a look at the tab that's in the corner of the screen or download the tab from below this video and uh, you'll see what's going on here. Oh, 
Okay, section two. This is probably this. I think it definitely is the shortest section in the solo. Uh, it's only two beats long, uh, but it's an important two beats because it's uh, a bit of a pivotal point. Basically, we go from a D minor seventh chord to a B seventh chord. That B seventh is kind of what we call a secondary dominant chord. I've done videos on chord theory like this before, but briefly, a secondary dominant chord is a chord which doesn't belong to the overall key, uh, but you bung it in just as a, as a kind of a signpost pointing at another chord. Um, and B7 is there to take us into an E minor 7. Um, you can hear that's a very nice cadence. So we've got the D minor 7 to a B7 leading us into the next section on an E minor kind of tonality. Now what happens here is we've only got two beats in this bar, it's a 2-4 bar. Um, he plays over the uh, D minor 7th, um, essentially as you can see in the tab, um, a little D minor pentatonic lick sliding up from the uh, E note 9th fret on the 3rd string. Just that, those few notes there. And then the B7 chord arrives, and the B7 chord has uh, a D sharp and an F sharp in it. And he plays simply those two, no two notes. So that lick, there we go, that's it. Here it is in context. Okay, so section three, um, the B7 chord at the end of section two, as I mentioned, sets us up nicely for the E minor tonality that we've kind of modulated to. Um, we start on an E minor 7th chord, which goes down to a D7 chord, and then a C major 7th chord, and then an E minor 7th again, uh, and then an E 11th, which is nothing more than, you can think of it as either a B minor 7 chord or a D chord over an E bass note. And that chord is functioning to take us back into an A minor at the beginning of the next segment, as we'll see. So what licks are being played over this little collection of chords then? Well, if you remember that previous lick in um, section two, there it is, it finishes on the F sharp note. And basically what happens now is we bend that F sharp up to a G then let it back down again. And this is happening over an E minor 7th and that um, F sharp note is a 9th with regard to E minor 7th. So like we saw at the beginning of the solo, we're adding the 9th in to give a kind of minor 9th sound. Here's the lick that occurs over the um, E minor 7 chord. Spending quite a bit of time on that F sharp note, um, as I say, to kind of accentuate the ninth. Uh, then we move down to the D7 chord, and the lick that happens here is... Again, it's just basically E minor pentatonic. Oops. There it is, played it right that time. You will see that uh, sometimes being played as... That little shape up there, it's the same notes, I just find it more convenient to play it um, that way, which is why I've tabbed it out that way. Uh, nothing really uh, earth shattering going on here. What's happening is basically with the notes are G to an A, D, E, A's and D's again, and then finally going up to an A note at the 17th fret on the E string. So it's basically lots of A and D notes which are chord tones from the D7 chord. Then we move to the C major 7th chord uh, with this lick. And even to a casual observer you can see that that is coming out of this shape here of E minor pentatonic. Okay, 
okay so he's using E minor pentatonic over a C major seventh chord um, why well C major seventh is an E minor chord but with a C bass we saw this on the um, David Gilmore solo analysis I did last week um, where basically uh, he plays an F sharp minor arpeggio over a D chord tonality and the resulting sound is D major 7th because D major 7th is an F sharp minor chord just with a, a D bass note. Well the same thing is true here if you take um, an E minor chord there's an obvious one down there and that's E minor and if you change the bass note to a C there it is there E minor with a C bass note gives you C major 7 so he's playing an E minor pentatonic over the C major 7 because there is an E minor chord lurking within it um, so what happens next is we get this E minor 7 to uh, E 11 lick uh, kind of chord change rather and the lick that he plays over this is and that's concluding on an A note there um, to correspond with the A minor chord that, that's coming next um, again mainly just uh, E minor pentatonic all of that is E minor pentatonic the only note which crops up from outside of it is this F sharp note here at the uh, 19th fret on the B string and interestingly what we get there is um, F sharp coming down to a D and a B that's a B minor arpeggio starting to sound like Hotel California there isn't it um, and remember I said that that E 11th chord is basically a B minor 7th with an E bass note well no coincidence that he's using uh, a little B minor arpeggio as part of that lick there it is here's the lick and there it is now here's that uh, all in context and nice and slow so you can see and hear what's going on okay then section four the halfway point uh, what's going on here is we're back excuse me while I grab my pick we're back in an A minor tonality and the two chords that we're focusing on here are the A minor 7 to a G7 over the A minor 7 he basically plays an A minor arpeggio with one slight little twist that we'll uh, discuss uh, an A minor arpeggio contains the notes of A, C and E and what he does is he takes this C note and bends up to it from a B like that which the B is the ninth we've seen this a couple of times so far in this solo where over a minor chord on minor seven he will add the ninth um, just to add a little bit of a minor ninth kind of sound so over the A minor chord he's playing like that and you can see he's bending up to the uh, C note from the B and you know kind of keeps on coming back to that B note to give it that minor ninth sound after that we're on to the G7 chord and what he does there is slides up from the A and descends an E minor arpeggio why that why E minor well you can think of that E minor arpeggio as being a fragment of an E minor pentatonic which is the same thing as a G major pentatonic which is going to fit beautifully over that um, G7 chord at the end of that arpeggio he lands on a D note which is a chord tone from the G7 repeats it an octave higher and then finishes on the root note of the G7 chord here though, all of that is in context right then uh, the next one I think this is section 5 we're on to now um, we're playing over an F major 7th chord here and in the same way as 
when we saw the C major 7th chord earlier where we played to an E minor tonality because there's an E minor chord hiding inside that C major 7th or C major 7th is an E minor chord but with a C bass well if we apply that same kind of idea to this then an F major 7th chord is actually and you can see this when you look at the shape on the neck just an A minor chord but with an F bass note so no surprises to find out that what he does here is plays an A minor pentatonic lick over that chord and it goes like this pure A minor pentatonic um, nice little pedal tone lick that actually uh, where you play this note then back to this one this note then back to this one this note and back to this one and so on um, that's what we call a pedal tone lick and um, it's very effective so just an A minor pentatonic lick over the F major 7th chord uh, here it is in context okay the probably the most complex lick in the whole solo this is where you've got to uh, grasp the nettle take the bull by the horns um, if you like and get to grips with some jazz theory um, the chord that we're playing over here is a B flat 7 flat 5 don't be scared B flat 7 flat 5 is basically an E7 chord but with a B flat bass here's E7 Okay, you can hear that is an E7 chord and the B flat note just provides a wonderful sense of tension you would usually use this chord to take you into some kind of A or A minor because you can hear that sounds really beautiful like that that really works nice as a, as a way of forming tension and then release like that and that's kind of what's happening here because we are going to an A minor chord but much like the E7 chord that we've disguised here with a, uh, an unusual root note we've disguised the A minor in a similar way we've seen this before just play an F bass note or under the A minor chord and you get an F major 7th chord so thinking about this uh, chord change here this B flat 7 flat 5 to A minor to F major 7th I just tend to look at something like that and think E7 to A minor and that's how I, I tend to play over it and that's exactly uh, what he's done here um, if you've got a very tense sounding chord like that what we call an altered dominant chord watch me Robin Ford video um, if you want to know a little bit more about that about those kind of chords then a scale that is very very useful here is what's called the super locrian scale which is basically just a melodic minor scale from the the seventh note um, so f melodic minor is f g a flat b flat c d and e and if we kind of play from that e note we get the e super locrian uh, scale or mode and the lick that he plays here uses notes all from that scale um, apart from one passing note the B note there okay but the lick is and it just fits that um, B flat 7 flat 5 or E7 over a B flat bass beautifully okay here it is as ever in context okay after all of that um, melodic minor super locrian mode dominant 7 flat 5 jazzy shenanigans in the previous segment uh, we're back into more familiar pentatonic territory with um, section number 7 first of all let's have a look at the chords it's this sequence okay and what we've got there is F major 7th 
to G7, A minor 7, to G6, uh, where are we? There we go, to D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7. And once again, we begin with the F major 7th, and once again, he kind of thinks about this as being um, a, a form of A minor because, you know. There's the A minor chord, there's the F bass note, that's an F major 7th. Um, apart from the first note in this, which is just a little kind of grace note, a little passing note, all of that first part of the lick is A minor pentatonic. There it is like that. Straight out of everyone's favourite pentatonic pattern. Uh, when the G7 chord arrives, he slides up into um, G major pentatonic, pattern number four. There we go. So that continues on like this. Basically like that, just straight into a G major pentatonic. Nothing at all uh, worthy of um, further scrutiny there. We then hit the G, the, sorry, the A minor seven, and once again we look at um, the B note, the ninth. We start off with the uh, minor third of the A minor seven, which is the C note. That's the chord tone there, and he then bends the root note up to the ninth, like that. So you, and then. So that is over that part of the lick again, kind of going for the ninth over the over a minor chord. It seems to be something of a recurring theme in this solo, and we hear it one more time in this lick. Um, this lick finishes with this little recurring motif, um, just basically an A note, a D note, and an E note, uh, A D A E, which is played twice. And that E note there lands over one of the D minor seven chords, okay, which is a, that E is a ninth of that chord. So yet again, we're seeing that um, adding the ninth into the minor chord kind of phenomenon in this lick as well. So let's hear all of that in context. And the final section, number eight. This is building up to the big finish of the solo. Um, and it's played over an E minor seven, uh, going to an F major seven, back to the E minor seven, D minor seven. And you can almost hear where that's heading for. It sounds like it's wanting to go back to a C chord. And it kind of does, it goes like this. And then C. However, when we get to that C, we don't just play a normal C, we play a C7 sharp 9, which is that kind of, uh, it's probably the one altered dominant jazzy kind of chord that most rock players know. Because it's in so many Hendrix songs. Um, and that is the, 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 the chord that the uh, sol solo kind of culminates on. But before we get there, let's have a look at what's happening over this uh, E minor 7, F major 7, D minor 7. Well, basically, we've got this little run. There it is. And if we look at the notes in that, we've got an E, a G, an A, a passing note of B flat, then a B, then E, then back to B again up to C, E, G, just outlining a C major arpeggio, then another passing note of A flat, then C, then sorry, then an A, then a C, then a D, here's the run. There it is. So apart from those two passing notes, the uh, B flat and the A flat, 
all of those notes are straight out of a C major scale um, which fits very nicely with the kind of implied C major tonality of that uh, little descending chord run so you yeah, know no surprises there when we get to the C7 sharp 9 uh, what happens is we've got this bend up to, from the D up to the A which is the third of that uh, chord but we don't really reach that chord until we hit this B flat note here um, 11th fret on the second string that B flat note is just a chord tone from the um, C7 sharp 9 and then we're starting to get a little bit more sparsely populated with notes now we're on the kind of wind down to the to the finish of the solo uh, but you can make the case for the next lick being kind of a C Dorian kind of thing uh, because we take the A note um, and bend it up to a B flat and then release bend and pull off to the G and then onto the D sharp note which is once again a chord tone from that C7 sharp 9 so you know if I was just to kind of see that little arrangement of notes immediately I'm starting to think the Dorian mode but you know that's not really um, an important factor of what's going on here the final lick in the solo uh, happens once again over that uh, C7 sharp 9 and we've got a little bit of finger tapping um, not exactly uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, but still a very uh, useful little technique he bends the D note here at the 7th fret he bends that uh, up to an E note like that and then it's not just that note that's raised in pitch by two frets now all of the rest of the notes along the length of that string have been raised in pitch by two frets so when he taps the uh, 13th fret which would normally be an A flat we actually get a B flat which once again is one of the notes in that chord so he's bending up to the E note that note there and then he's tapping onto that note there uh, so you get and then we finish uh, the whole solo on this C note here which is um, an A minor part chord tone basically which is where uh, we go into the beginning of the next part of the solo uh, let's hear all of that in context So there you go, that is um, a bit of a breakdown of what I think makes um, that fantastic Larry Carlton solo from Kid Charlemagne work so brilliantly well. It really is astonishing the fact that um, all of this was kind of going on inside Larry's head while he was playing, maybe it wasn't. Uh, in fact it probably wasn't he was just playing intuitively and instinctively having learned this stuff to the point where what's the old saying learn it until you can forget it that kind of thing so it just becomes second nature uh, what a phenomenal musician what a player and uh, I hope you agree if you're not familiar with the track it occurs on the uh, I think the 1976 album by Steely Dan called The Royal Scam and it is a fantastic album I highly recommend it and with that we'll pretty much wrap things up for today folks I do hope you found this informative instructive interesting and maybe even a little bit inspiring if you have why not hit the subscribe button and the notification bell that way you will never miss another video like this uh, don't forget you can download the tab uh, from below this video and if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition then get in touch with me via the details at the end of this video 
you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson, or wherever you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first one is free, so you've got nothing to lose. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks.